beautiful beings, this is Christina. I uh, am here today to talk to you about intuition. What is it? Um, most of us are familiar with it. We've obviously heard the term. We use it all the time, even if we're not aware of it, but it's really part of something that is strengthening powerfully within all of us. Um, our intuitive senses are, you know, things that are felt in the body. It's things that we perceive in our mind. There's a great quote from Albert Einstein um, that goes something like, uh, the intuitive mind is a sacred gift and the rational mind is a faithful servant. And we've created a society that worships the rational mind. And I don't know how much that's changed since he said those words first, but I do believe we are now in the moment where those things are changing rapidly. And in many ways, as we're going through these, um, th this spiritual quarantining of sorts, we are actually coming out of what I see as a massive um, soul quarantine that many of us have been in, uh, society has been in, and our souls have been quarantined, separated from our human selves by the dogma of the um, 3D world and the rational mind and the idea that this is all there is. Um, so that's really, really shifting. And at the same time, what's, what's interesting is that I've noticed there are those of us who are really drawn to the shift. There are those of us who are asking the questions, who am I, what am I doing here? Uh, what's this little inner voice trying to guide me from inside? Do I finally listen to it or do I continue to stuff it away and pretend that I, that I can't hear it and focus on the important things? And that's not to belittle anything else in our life, absolutely not, but uh, I'm sure most of you watching this can to some degree resonate with times in your life where you've had uh, an intuition or an instinct to do something, say something, be something, and um, have found ways to uh, snuff out that voice, to quiet that voice, and rationalize away what it's trying to say to you. And that's really, that's, that's really the, uh, the heart of Einstein's quote is, you know, by, by living and growing up in a society that has placed the rational mind above everything else, um, it, has, uh, it has belittled the intuitive mind. Um, sorry, I'm just hearing all kinds of weird noises here. Um, and uh, what that's led to is, you know, um, generational generations of people um, what that's led to is generations uh, who have ignored their intuition or you know uh, especially women who've been ridiculed and um, for for speaking of their intuition and knowing their intuition and trusting their intuition and often being asked to prove it. So we're going to talk about ways that you can actually start to strengthen your own intuition, your relationship with your intuition, which is really your relationship with your higher self, uh, as I see it in many ways, uh, your, and um, as well as with your guides. And it leads to the other steps, you know, as our psychic centers are opening and broadening, the intuition is the bridge to that. It's the connection to uh, opening up that that aspect of ourselves and growing all of our uh, relationship are growing our you know strengthening and growing our relationship with our soul bringing it out of quarantine so while we're in this physical quarantine in the 3d world right now is a great time to bring your soul out of quarantine and start getting to know her or him them and connect so let's talk about that a little bit Again, I just want to say, you know, anything that resonates with you from this video, I always say take it or leave it. I am sharing things that come through in my own downloads as well as things from my own life experiences and things that others have shared with me, sometimes things that I've researched 
and really resonate and confirm things within my own experience. So, you know, take what works for you and, and, and leave the rest. So one of the first things I wanted to mention is that each of our intuitions is very unique and it's going to work differently for each of us. So we do have to go through a process of experimentation and getting to know how those things work for us. There is no right or wrong when it comes to intuition and that can be really hard for our rational minds to to accept at first but if you think of your intuition as like a GPS if you're following the directions and you take a wrong turn the GPS will reroute you it'll start sending you back the other way so all you have to do is bring yourself to a point of self-awareness where you uh, allow yourself to experiment with the guidance of your own intuition. You allow yourself to make mistakes because once again, there are none. Everything is a lesson. And in that process, if you take a wrong turn, you, you can be rerouted. That's your opportunity to tap back in, to tune back in and say, you know, I missed a beat. And uh, so I've had to take the long way. And isn't it beautiful? Uh, and I've learned some things along the way, saw some things I wasn't expecting to see, and it's, it's all part of the journey, you know? It's, we really have to get away from the idea of right and wrong when it comes to our intuition, and uh, just l discover more deeply how it's a flow, and it's a guidance, and when connecting with our higher selves, you know, we often see our higher self is something outside of ourselves but really it is who you are it already is within you and it's always been with you and it exists in multiple levels and multiple dimensions you your soul uh, it, it there's pieces of you in other dimensions that are, are channeling through as your higher self it doesn't mean she's wiser than you are right now but it might mean she has a different perspective on what's going on and can see things outside of the 3D world that uh, could be very useful and helpful to you. So, you know, there's all kinds of different ways to look at it, but um, it's important to know that your higher self is always within you, always with you. And the more you start to connect and tap and in and use, like I said earlier, this time to create a relationship with your soul, I believe the stronger that connection gets. So, you know, why does our intuition scare us sometimes? Other than the fear of getting it wrong, I believe one of the reasons the intuition, following our intuition scares us is because it means um, change. Our intuition is often directing us towards change. It directs us towards facing our fears. It directs us towards stepping into our power. It directs us towards following a dream. Um, that we might not feel supported in, in our physical world. Uh, maybe, you know, it might appear to the rest of the world to have a fabulous job, a fabulous business, beautiful house, white picket fence, what have you. And your intuition might be screaming at you and saying, you know what, uh, you need to go into a cabin in the woods and write a book for for three months and you start talking about that to some of your friends and they're like what are you crazy like your life is perfect what are you going to do just blow it up it happens so our intuition is always calling us forward in life and for humanity that has become uh, servants and worshipers of the rational mind and very much consumed within consumerist uh, lifestyle where uh, the the uh, mass media entrainment programs are our education systems everything is about you know finding stability finding security finding ways to um, you know be entertained 24 7 and becoming very comfortably numb when when there are intuitions and instincts coming up that are calling us forward it can be definitely a little bit scary because it means stepping outside of your comfort zone for sure 
but that is the beautiful journey and that is how we grow and that is how we move ourselves forward and it's continuous as well so definitely there are some tools we can use to start connecting with our intuition they're absolutely not necessary but super helpful and they've been used for a very long time uh, divination tools so oracle cords is one oracle and tarot cards i you know love pulling those and and it's so much fun to see often how i'll pull the same one for a period of time until i actually get the message and then um, you know it'll move on to something else but it's really really common for me to uh, and maybe this means I'm a bit of a slow learner but I don't know like they just um, are incredibly useful tools to ask questions do a single card pull do three cards or work with your friends you know pull cards for each other um, Dousing with a pendulum is another great way that you can work with your intuition. If you have uh, any sort of a crystal on a string, um, a pendulum style one, uh, you can um, program it. it. I mean, generally they are going to go clockwise for yes and counterclockwise for no. And all you do is hold it in front of you, ask a very simple yes or no question, and watch how it starts to move. And that experiment right there um, is one that very quickly, I mean, I remember when I did that, uh, my dad taught me how to do that when I was a little girl. And I, I was completely blown away. And over the years, I've gone back to it many times. And, you know, often you'll do it for somebody and they won't believe you. They'll be like, oh no, you're turning, you're turning that. And then you give it to them and say, well, here, give it a go. And it really is, one of the most simple techniques and really just requires us letting go our rational mind, putting that question out there, holding it with no attachment and watching how the crystal spins. So that's a really fun one to play with. Um, we're going to talk about different ways to, um, with body testing as well, how you can test because your, your body is an amazing intuitive, uh, I want to say receptor for some reason uh, yeah um, yeah I guess receptor and and communicator of, of your intuition you know we get instincts bodily instincts for a reason and sometimes they're really subtle so a lot of this work is actually just tuning into the subtler layers of things um, and learning how to recognize those. So we're going to talk, talk about that a little bit. The other thing I want to say about intuition is that it is a part of ourselves that's always guiding us to heal. And of course we heal by feeling and sometimes that can be a little bit scary as well. But learning to feel is learning to heal. And one of the biggest things that I have found that has stopped me from following intuition is actually trauma that's stuck in the body and this is a really really common thing and that's why our intuition is always guiding us to heal and when we do have trauma in the body um, and our intuition is calling us forward towards something new that can create a real struggle a real conflict within us and when we have trauma in the body, it can keep us locked in the visionary state. So we're getting all these great intuitions, we're getting all these ideas and visions, but we stay there and we kind of spiral around, uh, waiting almost for the change, uh, dreaming about it. But until we're willing to feel the trauma, feel, feel the things surrounding the experience, bring them up so that they can be healed, and then that often requires looking at our beliefs. Like I said, uh, we have an intention, we've received an intuition, we've created an intention. You want to be a yoga teacher, for example. You, you want to start your own business. Um, whatever the case is, uh, it, it can often seem really big and really like overwhelming. And we're sitting there going, I don't, the brain and mind's going saying, I don't know how to make this happen. That's not really the next step. Uh, the next step is looking at your beliefs 
that are blocking you from taking the action. So as you're thinking about what do I do next and yet you're sort of locked in the visionary stages of it and I mean that can go on for uh, days, it can go on for weeks, it can go on for years uh, depending on how deep the trauma is within us. Um, but as we move through those limiting beliefs, as we start to see them, uh, the things that are stopping us, whether it's, I'm, you know, I'm not good enough, I'm not smart enough, I don't have the training, I don't have the money, any of those things are limiting beliefs. I'm too old, I'm too young. Um, and we start to dig a little deeper at what it is that's really taking, you know, t um, stopping us from taking this vision and turning it into action and in stepping into those things that we want to be doing, uh, we really need to take a pause and look at those limiting beliefs. And that is true for everything we're discussing for this, you know, um, the ascension process and uh, for stepping into your power and becoming consciously embodied beings. And that's a process of looking at all of our limiting beliefs. Um, and a, a really good way to sort of frame that is, you know, looking at habits versus instincts. Our habits are the things that keep us stuck in the patterns of the old. Um, and our instincts are often the things that are pushing us or um, propelling us towards something new. If we're fighting hard against something. we're fighting hard against something that we feel really called to do, it's not necessarily that we're reading our intuition wrong. It's just that we might not be on the right timeline for taking action on that intuition yet. So what that means is your body and your world around you needs to be ready for, for that change. It needs to be ready for you to share, it needs to be ready for you to do the things that you want to do. So it's, you know, the process of strengthening our intuition and getting more and more in touch with um, our higher selves and our psychic centers is really, part of it is learning um, when to act and when to wait. And so the things to look at when determining whether it's time to act or time to wait is is the body and is your 3D world ready for this change? If trauma isn't clear, if we haven't done a lot of healing and the body isn't ready, we're gonna feel a lot of things as we try to progress and step into our own power. Fear is completely normal. Fear is gonna happen anytime we are learning to grow and change. But there's a scale of fear right? So we can be in sort of a normal kind of nervous fear level about trying something new, or we can be in a state of complete terror. And I've definitely experienced both many, many times um, as I've been going through my own processes of healing. And when you're in a state of terror about doing something, your body isn't ready. And you're going to push yourself into something that you're not ready for. The experience is not going to be aligned. You're not on the right timeline. You haven't done the healing. And chances are that experience is going to be so unpleasant that it's going to convince you with the use of your rational mind that you've made the wrong choice. Does that sound familiar to any of you? When we push ourselves too hard, too fast, we're going to get a response from the universe that says you need to wait. You need to you need to align yourself more fully with this um, intention. And, you know, time is a tricky thing that we've talked about uh, quite a bit and we'll continue to talk about. One of my favorite ways of defining time is that time only exists when we're harmonizing with it. Meaning time only exists in this kind of linear sense, when we're learning to harmonize 
with being who we are in the eternal moment of the now. Does that make sense? Might be worth going back, writing that down and reading it over a couple of times. Um, but that's one of the great gifts we've been given here in this world and we need to learn how to work with it and take the time that we need in order to grow and elevate our vibrations and find our way back into a natural rhythm um, until we're ready to step through, until we get to a level of fear that's kind of that coin where it's fear on one side and excitement on the other and all you have to do is flip it. Uh, but that's completely different than terror and feeling frozen and feeling like for me, I, I have literally been in those moments where I'm trying to force myself to do something and I feel like I'm under attack. And that is my body speaking to me very loud, saying you're not ready to do this. You haven't done the work. You haven't, you're not on the right timeline for yourself. And I've learned to listen. So that's good. The other thing is, is your 3D world ready for you? Um, is, is your 3D world ready for this big change? And that includes family and friends and your business partners. You know, you get the, the idea, the intuition to uh, start a new business. And that doesn't necessarily mean that, that, that the best thing is just to blow up what you have overnight and, and leave it all behind and move on. And, Sometimes we're on, on these, you know, great, fantastical spiritual journeys and quests. Uh, it, it can become very easy to get disconnected from our, uh, from our 3D lives and our physical connections and our relationships as they're shifting and changing, you know, because we're shifting and changing, as we've talked about. Uh, those relationships shift and change as well. So... But a good example is, you know, there are many, many channels in this world that re have been receiving information about the time that we're in now for decades. And most of them, I would, I would say, many of them, I would venture to say most of them, have chosen not to share m that information until now because they knew that the 3D world wasn't ready to hear it. They knew that... Uh, it, it's just a point of, of ridicule, really. It's just a point of, um, it would just lead to confrontation and ridicule and misunderstandings, fear uh, within, within the collective, all these things. There's, there's a timeline that's in synchronicity, that's in divine harmony with everything that we do. And as we learn to live within that synchronistic harmony, and we learn to attune ourselves to the divine timing of life, being in the flow, as we've talked about, then we can start to see when it's the right, we feel when it's the right time to act. The signs become very clear, and it's like, you know, you have to do this now. And that's why so many of these beautiful people are starting to speak out about the things that they've they've known and received and foreseen and had visions of. Um, of course, there's many who have shared it and they felt that it was the right time and, you know, it's drops of water in a bucket, um, which is now starting to spill over. And that's a wonderful and beautiful thing. So take that into your own personal journey and, um, and look at your 3D world when you are getting these great instincts and these great ideas to change. Are your ideas for something new? Are they in line with your intuition? Is your body ready? Is your world ready? Um, you know, people have these incredible awakenings and come to their family and start talking about the love and the light and how they don't, you know, need anything in this world anymore. And, and their families look at them like they're absolutely cuckoo. And um, and that's fine. I mean, I, I've been there myself and, uh, you, but you learn, you learn as you go that you need to be able to use your intuition, not only to guide yourself along the right timeline, but it starts to, it starts to 
become very clear who's ready to hear what because we receive information from our level of consciousness. We understand information from our level of consciousness. So you can read the exact same paragraph to a room full of people. It's going to mean something different to everybody in there uh, with some, you know, groupings in there. So be becoming more self-aware and becoming more aware in general uh, is going to guide us towards stepping into our power and owning our our intuition and we learn as we go and again there's there's no wrong choices it's all it's all learning so when we're bringing something to the world the world also has to be ready to receive it um, and you can bring you know you can bring the horse to the water but you cannot make it drink you cannot make him or her drink and the same is true with information so that's really big and it's really important and and so I'm glad we're talking about it today the the other sort of tool like I mentioned before and I said I would get back to it with the body test um, your body is an intuitive machine, okay? It is constantly talking to you. And there are so many different ways that we can start to perceive those messages it's giving us. And uh, there is, uh, it's basically, you're thinking, you know, think the law of attraction, think resonance. Um, and I have a great little test for doing this that I would suggest is, is uh, let me just think. Well, okay, so we'll start with something simple and subtle. We'll start with food. You know, after this video, I'm thinking of eating something and I can pick two things. You know, I can pick a smoothie in one hand and a sandwich in another. And I can take each of those things and give them each 30 to 60 seconds just to hold that vibration within me and see how my body responds. So, smoothie, okay? Okay. Um, sandwich. I'm already smiling because I want the sandwich. <laughs> And that's probably because I've already had two smoothies today. And there's my logical mind confirming things for me. But my body, you know, right away was telling me, oh, I need something substantial. I want something I can bite into. And, you know, maybe that uh, is a little bit too subtle, but you can use the people in your life to practice this. So, you know, think about a couple of people that you know. Think about somebody that you really love being with that you know you just can't get enough of you're just such in great synchronistic harmony and you just have the best time together you can talk about anything and sit with that person in your heart hold that person in your heart and sit with that for a little while and just see how that feels how your body's like buzzing and vibrating and you know memories flash through and you're thinking about the next time you get to see them and how wonderful that's going to be and spend, a, spend some time with that. And then after that, you know, pull up somebody who, you know, you, 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 it's not like that. You don't have that resonance with them. And, you know, they even make you, give you a sense of, you know, wanting to recoil. Um, somebody that, uh, you know, is just not somebody you enjoy being with. You, even you, so pull that person in, in, inside and think about what that feels like in your body when you're around that person. What signals is your body giving you when you're around that person? Do you feel nervous, anxious? You know, do you even feel a bit hostile maybe? You just have that sense of you want to, you just want to leave. Yeah. So right there, you've got an amazing body test that you can do and you can do that with experiences you know as so you get an invitation to, to go out somewhere and perhaps you know perhaps your first your first uh, 
response to an invitation, if you're somebody who likes to stay home and you're more introverted, your first response to an invitation might be, oh no, I don't, I don't like parties, no, no, those are not for me. But sit with it for a minute and maybe you'll be surprised, like maybe sit with the idea of, okay, going to a party, lots of people, body is actually feeling a little bit excited about that idea right now and then sit with a, for a minute with the idea of staying home or whatever the alternative would be for you and one of the things that we want to look for in our bodies is that sense of aliveness that comes through when we're comparing things so that we start to tune into the signals that our body is sending us so even though it might be something that our mind is telling us we don't want to do our body might be telling us something different and sometimes we need to override our mind with our you know our rational mind that says oh no you don't like to do those things you're an introvert oh no you don't like you don't like that kind of food um, but maybe you haven't tried it um, in 10 years or something like that and you can take these opportunities uh, you can uh, for something new or an invitation or an intuition that you're getting from your intuitive side and take it into the body, right? So that it's not always your intuitive mind battling your rational mind. Take it into the body, ask your body how it feels about it. And if you start to feel, you know, there's a little bit of uh, energy running through, a little bit of excitement, a little bit of like, oh, you know? That, that's that's your your body's incredible incredible intuitive machine computer uh, giving you that biofeedback it's exactly what it is and it's what it's designed to do whether it's what we're eating what we're doing what we're creating and <clears throat> you know that's really that's really one of the next step with intention uh, with intuition is that it is guiding us towards stepping into our power and what does that mean it means stepping into ourselves as creator beings um, here to co-create with with the universe and dream a new dream for for the earth and for each other what you know whatever that looks like to you um, if you're tapped in and tuned into your higher selves and your and your soul as your guidance that light from within as your guidance instead of the noise from all around, you're gonna be amazed at what you can create. You're gonna be amazed at the ideas that come through that are in line with your intuition. Um, those channels start to open. And that takes me to my next point, which is that we're all channels. We are all vessels. We all have the ability to bring um, higher knowledge, uh, uh, sacred teachings, um, intuitive guidance, uh, you know, visions and, and um, uh, insights into this life through. We all have a soul and we all have a higher self or selves and we can all channel our higher dimensional selves. We start that process by asking. We start asking, we make that connection that I've been talking about with our, with our soul and our higher selves. And the more we ask, the more we're gonna get answers. And those answers are gonna come in many different ways. And we've talked about some of those ways with the divination tools and whatnot and with the body test. Um, but as you're wanting to perhaps maybe get more into the channeling side of things, you know, we're all channels. It doesn't mean we're all going to channel extra dimensionals and um, different, you know, intergalactic family. It doesn't mean you can't. I, I absolutely believe that we all can. Um, but we definitely, I do believe, we all can channel our higher selves and our souls. And 
it's very simple. I mean, right now, um, you could take a pen and a piece of paper and ask your soul a very simple question. What does my soul want me to know today? What does my soul want to tell me today? And then just start writing. I challenge you. I mean, it, give yourself a minute. Give yourself two minutes. Start writing. Just let it flow. Automatic writing. What does my soul want to tell me today? And, you know, when I first started doing this, and I know I'm not the only one, um, but when I first started doing this many, many years ago, I, <laughs> I was often started, I was really surprised by the um, utter sort of simplicity of the words that were coming through. And, you know, it would be things like, all is love, and we are one, and you are wonderful, and, um, you know, uh, we are divine beings of the light. And I'd look at it after I'd finished, and, you know, um, from my rational thinking mind, often be a little disappointed. And, um, now and many years later, I've started to, to understand that in order to in order to become aligned with our higher selves and our souls, which resonate from a place of such pure love, they have to. It, the process has to uh, bring us. We must calibrate to that frequency of love, and our rational minds are not calibrated to that. In, in most cases, we're not raised to um, we're not raised to be programmed with uh, continuous thoughts of love. In most cases, so until we calibrate our minds to that um, level, we will you know we generally don't start receiving uh, more detailed and more um, more extensive messages. So I guess what I'm saying is don't be surprised if when you first try this exercise, you, you get you know some very simple, very loving, very kind words coming through. And it might feel to you like, oh, well, this isn't really telling me much um, except that I am love. Well, that's a big thing. And uh, in our world right now, that's a really big thing that we all need to uh, accept and understand and calibrate ourselves with and tune into in order to open up those channels and get to those higher dimensions and, and uh, bring in bring in whatever it is that you're looking to channel through or that's looking to channel through you because it goes both ways and uh, it's the frequency of love and the details will follow so continue to write down what you receive as you practice this exercise. What does my soul want me to know today? Um, what does my soul want to tell me today? Because the real question is, how often do we speak to ourselves like that? When you look at the words, you know, how often do we look at ourselves in the mirror and say, you know, you're a divine being of love. I love you so much. And we don't, you know, in general. Um, so that really is quite powerful, even though it might at first seem to be flaky or, or something along those lines. I don't know what the right word for it would be, but uh, the intuition is not going to be your inner critic. So if what you're writing down, um, if what you find is coming through are criticisms of who you are and what you do, that's not your intuition. That's not your higher self. That would be your rational mind is overriding your intuitive mind, your, your, you know, your intuitive abilities. And that does happen too. And, uh, but it's really important to know that your intuition is always going to be coming from a place of love, your guidance from your higher selves and your soul and your guides and your guardian angels is always going to be filled with love. And even though these things, the, you know, the fear and the inner critic and the opinions of others, even though those might show up 
as we are using and growing and developing our intuition as a reflection, as a sign as to, you know, um, learning how to work with it. Uh, that's not what it is. That's simply um, the reflections we're creating and being presented with as we're going through the learning and growing process. Because definitely the opinions of others will come up in the world, but not in here, not in here, right? So, you know, following our intuition and stepping into our power is really all about um, personal growth uh, and healing and our soul force inviting us into a divine relationship that, you know, we separated from uh, at birth for many of us and throughout life and is reawakening and calling us back you know that soul call that um that comes from within and is beckoning us forward is saying hey you know you you, you have a purpose here you came here for a reason it's not nine to five um and it's it's something greater it's something bigger and we're all, we're all we're all here for that and a creative expression is definitely uh, one of the most powerful ways to tap into that so uh, intuition strengthening our intuition stepping into our intu intuition and like I just said is um, it is a path of creativity it is a path of setting intention it's a path of releasing habits and following our instincts it's a path of practicing and repeating, learning that there are no wrong turns, there are only detours and uh, scenic routes. <laughs> and there are the in-between moments where we are taking the time within time to harmonize with our true purpose, to harmonize with divine timing, to harmonize with our natural rhythm, to harmonize with the eternal moment in the now where we are present, where we are in our authentic power, where we are knowing who we are and why we're here. And it might not be every day, all day. It doesn't mean we have the answers to everything. But when you find yourself in that, that timeless moment where you are a clear and open channel and you are transferring through the information that's coming to you, you will find that there is no time. You will find that you will see and feel that a certain amount of healing has taken place, that your body is ready, that the environment you're in is ready, the people around you are receptive, the nature around you is receptive, the perfect spot where you want to go make that video just pops up and there's nobody around or the the perfect yoga studio um you know pops up and you have your next teaching gig so it's it's a really really powerful process um and all these ideas in our mind about what certain things mean and it's like oh well I could never do that you know I could I could I could never I could never be a painter or a singer or I couldn't be in a rock band well it doesn't mean you have to be in a rock band it just might mean that it's the next uh, breadcrumb along the trail guiding you further along to a place where you can harmonize with uh, your divine true self and that's really what the intuition is like working to do all the time, very hard. So practice with your divination tools of choice. It could be crystals too. Um, you know, there's so many different, so many different things we can try, but I really love working with my oracle cards. I love working with a pendulum from time to time. And I mean, the body is something that's always going with us wherever we are. So might as well work with it. <laughs> and do the body tests and another great one is actually it's along the lines of muscle testing uh, but basically if you're standing straight somewhere uh, forward is yes backwards is no so you 
put yourself into a very neutral stance and ask a question. It could be about, should I have a, should I eat this banana right now? Is this good for me? Um, you know, is it, uh, is it, is it the right time for me to, to go to sleep? Uh, or whatever, whatever, whatever the case is. You put yourself into a, a straight neutral stance and you know, take some deep breaths and just close your eyes and ask the question in your mind, a yes or no question, and watch if your body sways forward or sways back. Forward is yes, back is no. And, you know, most of these things are pretty, pretty instinctual and natural to our bodies, but it's never a bad idea to, to calibrate before you, before you do a body test and just, just let your body know, say, hey, I'm checking in with with you on something and I really want your your guidance on this intuition I'm receiving and um, you know for this test and it's forward is yes and backwards is no just so that we're both clear and then ask the question and allow it to flow and that's really really the best way to to tap into that so yeah our intuitive and felt senses are returning and those who are growing into it, as I'm sure all of you are if you haven't already, it's a continuous process of expansion so there really isn't, you know, any graduation from this kind of stuff. Um, really the more we learn, the more we grow and can share. And for those of us who are stepping into it we will activate the others around us it's just a natural process it's magnetic and um, we will activate all those other cosmic souls that that we come into contact with and that's a really beautiful fun thing too especially as you become more and more aware of what it is your soul is calling you to do next so bless your journeys enjoy the process be gentle and kind with yourself. Remember that you can't get it wrong. You can only learn how to make that connection stronger. And uh, I really look forward to hearing from all of you about what you think of this video and how you work with your own intuition and if some of these tips were helpful for you. And uh, yeah really excited to share more so for now I'm gonna say namaste enjoy your evening many blessings